right. I think that's a good time to start. What do you say, Bianca? Yes. Let's get everybody moving. It's time, time to, to elevate. elevate. It's yeah. time, to, time elevate. to elevate. Woo! Time, time to, to elevate. elevate. Yeah. Time to elevate. elevate. Uh huh. Time to, time to elevate. elevate. Woo! Time to elevate. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> all right we have 400 people signed up today so we are so so excited to have y'all here i'm gonna get started let's focus on elevating today y'all thank you so much for being here so welcome everybody bianca and i are so happy that you're here joining us today looking to elevate your brain retraining practice so y'all know us I'm Lindsay Mitchell. I'm your brain retraining coach and founder of Vital Side. And I'm Bianca Spears, passion, fight, and prosperity coach, helping others to connect to joy. This webinar, I'm just so excited for it. And it's catered to those of you who've been through a pr training program like the Vital Side membership, like DNRS, the Gupta program, Joe Dispenza's programs the lightning process or any other structured brain retraining process. Lindsay and I have years of experience under our belts, helping people to expand the limits of their minds through re brain retraining practices. And we hope to bring some of that to you today. Now, all of these programs have incredible benefits as we've all experienced, but in our work, we've seen some common questions come up as well. Like, how often do I have to practice? Am I practicing right? How do I make my practice work for me? And now that I'm healing and starting to change, how can I fit my brain retraining practice into my life in a way that works? All of these questions can be answered through the process of self-discovery and learning to prioritize your individuality so that you can make your practice really work for you. So that's what we're diving into today. Let's get into it. Today, you know, you, Lindsay and I are here. We're going to be having some fun. No <laughs> doubt about that. <laughs> and we'll be checking in with whether your practice matches the way that you best love to learn and sharing what to do if it's not a great match at the moment. We're going over three key questions to ask yourself in order to find the most sustainable, practical and personalized practice for you. And make sure that you stay to the end of the webinar today because we've designed a very special mental exercise for you that you can add into your daily brain retraining practice. And we're going to be giving each and every one of you a little gift just for being here. So be sure to stay to the end for that. Now, uh, a little bit of housekeeping, we will have questions at the end of the session. So if throughout the training, you find a question pop up, jot it down. You might even like to type it out in a notepad or something on your computer or your phone, ready to copy and paste into the questions section when that time comes. And our beautiful team member, Jacqueline is here. Thank you for being here, Jacqueline. Uh, she's monitoring the chat so that she can take note of any questions that come up or help anybody with technical issues if they're arising. So mm -hmm. if you don't have a, Brent, a pen and paper and you'd mm -hmm. like to grab one, there's going to be a lot that we're going through. So now's your chance to grab one. I just wanted to add to we are recording this session. So if you want to kind of sit here and listen and hang out, it will be recorded. Okay. So just to make sure we're all on the same page here in the right place, we are here to help those who have gone through an active brain retraining program that rewires your brain's neural pathways to go from that chronic state of fight or flight and access a more resilient and powerful place of growth 
and repair. So hang out with us for the next hour or so. We will have a Q&A at the end of our session today. Um, so we're going to be talking for about 40 minutes or so, and then we will have that Q&A for you so you can chat with us. So in order to figure out what really works for you and your brain retraining practice, we really need to reflect. So the next three questions will help you to do just that. So the first question, does the way you're practicing align with your learning style? So there are many different learning styles, but the three learning styles that I see most in my practice are visual, oral, and physical learners. So which one are you? So as I talk about these three learning styles, feel free to share with us on the chat which learning style you fit into. Now, maybe you have diligently journaled throughout your active brain retraining time. You maybe even are journaling right now. So you're taking notes and you're prepared and you maybe are a creative person. If that's you, awesome. It's likely that you are a visual learner. You learn through visualization, creativity through pictures, or creativity through words, and journaling is the way to go. So ask yourself, does your current practice allow you to play to your strengths and visualize? So I'm talking journaling, vision boards, pictures, creativity through artwork, and getting really clear and really specific as to what you do see for yourself and using your visualizations to get there. So Bianca and I encourage you to bring color and creativity to your practice. So maybe that means writing down each step of your practice on colorful note cards with pictures attached to them or even pictures of yourself doing that step or maybe even journaling through one of your daily rounds. Maybe that's you, but perhaps you are a more oral or auditory learner. So this is someone sitting in this presentation today, maybe not taking notes, but trying to be as present as possible, listening to the words that we say, trying to soak things in through the language that we use. They're also the person who is probably going to be watching this recording later on and just to make sure that they didn't miss anything. So if this is you, ask yourself, is your current brain retraining practice helping you to learn in an auditory way? Are you supplementing your current material with auditory material, things that you can listen to? So you can literally listen to a recording of yourself run through a practice. I also recommend doing a limbic system specific meditation and even adding music to your practice right before you practice to get you motivated and focused and also during your practice to really help cultivate that focus and attention. So this is really going to help you to solidify your practice and then to take it to the next level. So finally, we have our physical or kinesthetic learners. Though I'm a combination of all three of these, as we all are, kinesthetic is the best way that I personally learn, meaning I am a hands-on learner. If you've ever seen me talk, y'all know I use my hands and I move around a lot, which is typically why I stand up. <laughs> I like to have my hands on things in order to learn. So if you're like me and you're more of that physical kinesthetic learner, I always recommend bringing in movement to your practice and even textures, which is maybe you have something you haven't thought of before. So ways you can bring in movement include tapping exercises, using those daily, adding more vibrant and theatrical movement to your practice, and even adding hands-on tools like giving yourself a hug or even embracing something else like a pillow or somebody else during your practice. 
This may seem a little bit weird, but this helps you to boost your dose, that dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins as a kinesthetic learner. You can also bring in textures, which can be kind of fun. You can bring in that heavy weighted blanket that's super soft and makes you feel all types of cozy memories. Or you can even wear a new silky smooth blouse when you think of a future visualization of you sitting at a restaurant in that specific blouse and you're all dressed up and you feel that blouse on you and wow it feels so good and soft and comfortable. The more you feel as a kinesthetic learner, the better your practice will be and the more relatable it will be to you. Now remember to play to your strengths here. Think about which one of these is the most apparent learning style that you have. And if you're really not sure after this conversation we've had, then I encourage you to take the bits of recommendations for each of these learning styles and apply them to your current practice. See which one you get the most out of, that you feel those feel-good neurochemicals and can experience that shift. Remember, we want the one that makes you feel the emotion behind the experience the most. Mm, I don't know about you guys, but I got tingles partway through Lindsay speaking there. I'm very kinesthetic, uh, but yeah, definitely a combination of all. The second question to ask yourself is what works and what doesn't? So often we think of brain retraining as having to look in exact specific way and just the one way. And whether you're practicing an hour a day or 20 minutes a day, you're still making changes to your brain. We're actually making changes to our brains all the time. But when we commit to our brain retraining protocol, we're being intentional and proactive about the changes we make. And we're choosing to make positive ones that impact our physiology for the better. So what about you? What works for you in your practice? How much time can you allow each day? What does a typical routine look like for you? Where do you struggle with parts of your practice? Is there something that you can seek that will help you to do it a little better, a little easier, fit it in more, to seek additional resources? Or is there something that you can leave out of your practice entirely because it's feeding old overused pathways related to things like perfectionism and causing frustration? To answer this question, get it out on paper or speak it out if you're more of an oral auditory learner and processor. Write it out. Get clear on your schedule for each day and what it looks like. Say, what do you do on a typical Wednesday, as an example? Write out every single thing. Leave nothing out. You know, showering, cleaning, eating food, whatever it is. Make sure you've got it all in there. And circle the activities that make you feel calm, energized, or even content. Stick to these ones, the ones that bring you the joy and the happiness and the relaxation and peace. Stick to those. Now, we're always making changes through our brains, through our activities, and it's up to you what you choose to pay attention to as you go through those activities. If you're a kinesthetic or a physical learner and you've struggled with visualization in the past, what if instead of all the visualization tools you use, you actually substituted them with physical exercises to do? Things like gentle movement for your body. Maybe instead of a calming visualization, you can do a physical exercise, like shaking things off your body or even having a 30 second dance party. <laughs> Your practice doesn't have to look like anyone else's. It's yours and it can look like you. So the third question to ask yourself is how can I make this brain retraining practice sustainable to my life today? 
So this may be a news flash to you, but you are not the same person that you started out being when you decided to purchase your brain retraining program. You may not feel an incredible different difference yet or, or that incredible monumental shift yet but you are consistently making these changes to your brain so if you're committing time to your protocols and and spending your energy and and focus on them you are the one in charge here and you are the one slowly transforming your brain so you're not the same person and we can accept where we are today and look forward to living an optimal future. So what is one way you can make a version of your brain retraining practice sustainable to your life today? So it may look like a more vibrant practice because you're being a little bit more vibrant in your life, or perhaps you're thinking about things in a more vibrant way. So what you can do is first thing in the morning is shift away from Limby's stress response and begin to connect with PERI, your parasympathetic growth and repair response for maybe about 20 minutes first thing in the morning and connect with a more vibrant practice like Bianca was saying, adding a little bit more physical movement or even gentle movement in a chair or on your bed. And then maybe your nighttime practice looks like 10 minutes of a nighttime wind down practice. You can even add movement to your nighttime practice to wind down. And maybe that includes some deep breaths as well. So you have the ability to shift and change your practice to meet your lifestyle today. And this is a time that's really important here for us to let go of the rigidity and the attachment to the outcome and begin to connect with structure and excitement about the present moment, being here with us today with your two feet on the ground. And what this does is it helps us to decide and discern what our future desires will be. So, I encourage you to create a go-to practice that fits in your pocket or a pocket practice. <laughs> so this practice can be less than 10 minutes, maybe even five minutes. And it can consist of a version of your favorite protocols that you can use very quickly in the moment. And if you don't know a lot of state changers or protocols, feel free to ask and reach out to your resources. Bianca and I can help you to find some really great resources, some additional state changers to add to your practice. In fact, we're gonna go through one in just a couple of minutes. So a simple pocket practice can be a great go-to when you're on the road, becoming a little bit more active. Maybe you're visiting family or maybe you're even stuck in traffic. <laughs> you can also use it while you're at home. But it's important to know that it's absolutely possible to create a practice that works for you with your life today. So it's also important to acknowledge just how far we've come. So acknowledge that by spending 20 minutes this week writing down a hundred wins that you have had since starting your retraining practice. Now, when you write these things down, these 100 wins, if you get to number 49, take a break and come back to it at a later time. But I can guarantee you, if you've been practicing for months or even years, you have 100 wins. And they can look small and tiny and maybe things that you haven't even noticed before. So maybe a time that you chose to smile and laugh instead of fume and get frustrated. Or they can look like the one time that you could have been triggered in a specific way, but instead you went and used your go-to state changing exercise and you decided to shift. Or those days where you woke up with the smile on your face, maybe saying something that's important to you when you wake up, instead of kind of having those grumpy, grimacing days. 
or those periods of time where maybe you were successful in the way that you incrementally progressed or incrementally trained with a specific goal in mind, even if it's a one to 5% shift in reaching that goal, you did that. And that is a win worth noting and writing down. And this can be an extremely helpful exercise to help us decipher where we are today. So there are so many more changes you can become aware of, but often we push past the awareness and we expect more from ourselves, right? Because we're human, we want more, more, more without acknowledging just how far we have come and where we have been. So it's important to write these wins down. Okay, so now that we have answered these top three questions, it makes it a whole lot easier to discern a plan moving forward for us to help, um, you know, us to help you and you to help yourself connect with your purpose, your passions, and yourself. Mm, it's so true. And much like we push past our achievements on the road to the next thing, we often move on with the to do's of life, leaving behind some of the passion and the purpose. So let's tap into a little of that now. Do you remember what excited you as a kid? What did you absolutely love? You might have fond memories of exploring outside or of building things. Maybe you loved caring for your toys, your siblings, your pets or your playmates. What is it that you looked forward to? Maybe you looked forward to going to the cinema, to going out to parties. Maybe you looked forward to going to school each day. Maybe you're excited about being an astronaut or a doctor or an actor or having your own shop or business when you are older. When we start to think about these things, we may notice some threads that have carried throughout our lives. Maybe the child who loved to care for their pets or their playmates still loves to help others. Maybe they wanted to become a vet or they became a coach or a consultant of some kind. You'll notice the thread of your passions and what drives you, your purpose, as you start to tap back into these memories and these ideas that you had as a child. What in the past as a child or an adult has filled you with passion and joy and inspiration. You might have felt most alive and invigorated and inspired when you're at the beach. Or maybe when you rode your bike and felt the breeze on your face ruffling through your hair and your clothes. Perhaps seeing snow outside and making a snowman or snow angels helped you to feel passionate and joyful and inspired. Type in the comments now one thing that lit you up as a kid and write down some in front of you as well if you haven't already for your own inspiration. Write down things from childhood, write down things from adulthood, anything that lit you up or you know full well that lights you up. As you're writing, notice any excuses or resistance that crops up along the way. Because any of these thoughts, these beliefs, these ideas that come up in this time, they're things that we want to catch. We can rewrite our story. And awareness is the first key going, aha, there's something I want to change. Super, super important. So note any of those down from the space of curiosity and awareness without judgment, without any wrong or right, just noticing because that is our key to change. And if there's one thing I know for sure, it's that we can create change at 
any time. We can tap back into our passion whenever we want to. We can rewire our brains whenever we want to. And despite any physical abilities, commitments, physical distance or government restrictions that have held us back from doing the things that we love to do or being as passionate and purposeful as we've wanted to, we can find ways. When we look at some of the reasons that might hold us back, quite often it is some kind of old pattern of thought, of habit, and often it's our perception of ourselves because we don't see ourselves as the person who can do that or be that or have that. We might see ourselves as too inexperienced, too old, too young, too shy, too busy, whatever it is. But we're choosing to be those things and label ourselves as those things. And similarly, we can choose something else, something different for ourselves. When we redefine the way that we perceive ourselves, we can shift who we show up as in life, which changes the reality that we live in. It all begins in that beautiful, beautiful brain of yours. And changing our identity takes some shifting and rewiring. Some shifts may be similar to practices that you've already experienced and done. Other shifts may come from something totally different. Now, when people are asked about what their purpose is in life, they often freeze up digging for some kind of answer that seems more profound or more important than they currently feel. I truly believe our purpose is much more in the being than in the doing. I'm not going to ask you, what is your purpose in life today? Type it into the comments. <laughs> but I do want to ask you this. At the end of this life, what would you love to feel proud for being? What would you love to feel proud for being in your life? Would you feel really proud if you'd been calm and patient and present with your kids, with your partner, with your colleagues, with people who made mistakes? Would you feel really proud of having been bold in following your heart and your passions? Would you feel really proud of being you? Like all of you. I mean the real you. Not the you that's been watered down. Not the you that's who someone else thinks you should be or what you feel you have to be. The you that might have been forgotten or left behind. Not the you that's been hindered, hindered by Limby's stress response. Not an acceptable version of you, but all of you. Just imagine freedom and the fullness of that and really feel that now. If that would be something that you could be super, super proud of, type I'm here to be me in the comments now. I'm here to be me. <laughs> I'm here to be me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And I love that you're you and I love how all of you are you. <laughs> so that brings us to connecting with ourselves, the self. So I know I'm definitely not the only person here who during their brain retraining practice lost sight of who they are. And of course, that was never my intention. But prior to brain retraining, I was spending all of my time focused on healing, most of it focused on my healing or healing my physical body. And I spent so many hours and days of the week in doctor's offices and doing all these things to be proactive about my healing process. 
And although I do recommend taking care of your physical body, I felt like that was my entire life. And sometimes we can feel that way when it comes to brain retraining. So I forgot who I was, the Lindsay that brought me here with you today, my adventurous self that worked as a travel PA and jumped out of planes and saved lives in the Amazon rainforest. I forgot about the little Lindsay, like Bianca described, the little sweet and spunky child that used to love to play tetherball on the playground. I was always laughing and I was always trying to get my sister to dance and sing with me. So I was a doer and a shaker. But having a chronic condition put that on pause for the time being. And at least what I did was start to prioritize other elements of me, the resilience that I needed to have. And it wasn't a bad thing. It was a really good thing. And so when I started brain retraining, it felt like I had purpose again. I had this momentum for change and it gave me the sense of structure in my life that I could commit to using these specific daily techniques, being proactive about not just my physical body, but my nervous system, which improves my mental health and also how I feel physically. But then I got caught up in the structure of things and that created a sense of rigidity. So I felt if I missed a day of practice or if I wasn't doing a technique quite right, um, then I was doing it wrong, right? It was that perfectionistic tendency that then came out of me. So after learning all about visualization techniques and mental rehearsal, you know, when I studied NLP and EFT and thought field therapy, I came to understand that there are so many different ways to make positive changes to the brain. And we can make these changes and feel good about them based on who we are, based on what we see for ourselves, and based on the goals that we have in our lives. So that's why it's so important to me in private sessions with people to really help Clients connect with themselves, even in the process of brain retraining. And here's the thing, what worked for us in the past isn't necessarily going to work for us in the present or even the future. So we need to think about that. So visual learners out there, think about this like blowing, blowing off the cobwebs of who you are at your core. So you can understand why your beliefs are so important in the process of uncovering and connecting with who you are. And often we have those limiting beliefs that keep us stuck and sticky and held back from the potential that we have. So it's also worth uncovering those limiting beliefs and then learning to shift them so that we can understand we don't need those limiting beliefs in our present life, and we certainly don't need to bring them into the future, though they may have been beneficial and helpful in the past. But what worked in the past does not necessarily mean we need it and want it and can use it in the present. So it's up to us then to be discerning and proactive about those beliefs that we have and learning to shift them. And then in the process, we can connect with our core values, the values that we hold near and dear to our hearts. Core values are how we make decisions, how we live our lives, how we make relationships work, and how we choose our passions and jobs and friends. So it's not enough to simply just know our core values, but we need to apply them and then integrate them into our lives so that they're at the forefront of our minds when we brain retrain or when we look for a new job that lights us up or when we start to live our lives in a way that feels good and makes sense to us. Y'all, you choose who you want to be. And we have such complex parts of ourselves. We really do as humans. But if we connect with our more resilient, more vital side, we can create a life that works for us, that flows naturally and helps us to achieve all the little things that we want to achieve.
Yes. And as promised, we have designed a special state changer just for you. So we'll start out with some movement for those kinesthetic learners, add some laughter for the auditory learners and include some visualization for the visual learners too. So you can do this standing up or sitting down. Hey, if you want to lie down, you can do that too. It's all about you as you might have picked up on. So the first thing we're going to do if you've got the space is inhale, reaching up and we're going to shake out and just let go of anything we might be holding on to. So all together, we're going to inhale, reaching up, shaking out, sighing out. Oh. I like to give your little legs a shake too. Let's do two more of those. Oh. Ah. Yes. One more, inhaling, reaching up, holding it for a sec at the top and laughing it out. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Very good. take a deep breath in and just bring up a nice tai chi wave slowly out one more as a breath And on our next exhale, we're going to laugh it out. So inhaling up. <laughs> inhaling. Take a nice deep breath all the way in and exhale all the way out with a sigh. <sighs> when you get to the end and feel you have no more breath, just a little laugh. <laughs> Gets a little more of that air out, really activating parry, that parasympathetic response. So breathing all the way in. All the way up. <sighs> <laughs> 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 One more. <laughs> All the way in through the nose, nice and slow. Slowly out. Now. 
And when you feel comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. So today we have done a lot of connecting with joy. With your eyes closed, feel the warmth and the heat that you have created in your body right now. And maybe today you have also begun to connect with who you were as a child. Maybe you didn't have any specific experience in mind that you had when you were a child, but you began to connect with what you looked like. With your eyes closed, see yourself as that child. See that child like he or she or they are moving in front of you, running around like a child does. Breathing freely like a child breathes and even laughing fully like a child laughs. <laughs> Seeing yourself being a kid, having this visual in mind. And you, present day you, start to breathe like a child right now. You can even be silly with it, maybe taking in some deep breaths, feeling your belly move and extend and expand so full and large that it gets rotund and round. <laughs> Maybe even blowing out your lips like a child does. Or even shaking your body out a little bit on that exhale. Breathing like a child and keeping in mind that you are here in this present moment. The past experiences we have had, they're not happening now. We're simply bringing in the emotions of the past into the present moment. So bring that child visualization back into the forefront of your mind, breathing and laughing and playing like a child. Take this child version of yourself to the park or the beach or to the fair. One of your favorite places. As if you're chaperoning this child, holding their hand, letting them go and watching them laugh. What are they laughing at? seeing them move, pay attention to how they are moving. <laughs> Maybe they're pointing at something and giggling. What are they pointing at? Maybe they have sticky fingers. <laughs> what have they been eating? A popsicle? Pay attention to the wide grin on their face that shows up as if they've just smelled something. And what is that smell? Fresh roses or maybe some residue from that strawberry popsicle. This child, what are they hearing around them? Did a sprinkler system turn on and they hear it? What are they feeling or touching? Maybe the cool spatter of water from that sprinkler onto their skin <laughs> and they're giggling and laughing. This picture in your mind that's playing out in front of you like a movie. Bring colors. 
let those colors shine and make them even more vibrant right here, right now for those kinest, for those uh, visual learners, making those colors vibrant and bright. Bold colors, getting more detailed on this visualization. For those kinesthetic learners, start to move like this child moves, swaying, giggling, being goofy, breathing like the child, grinning like the child. For those auditory learners, what does this experience sound like to you? Little tiny baby giggles and can you make this noise right now? What does that sound like? This experience of pure bliss, of pure joy, of pure laughter, fun and playfulness, no inhibitions, simple play. And what is the emotion behind this experience? See the emotion, the word. Make it big and bold and loud. Joy, play, peace, content, love and hold on to this emotion, making these words big, bold, expanding them even more, making them more vibrant than ever. Holding this for just a couple more seconds. Let's take a deep breath in and out together. Let's breathe in. And let's do Bianca's. <sighs> Feeling for just a moment in time what it is like to cultivate, to hold on to, and create this emotion out of nothing but your mind. All right. If y'all liked this one, you can take this, stick it into your pocket and make it a little pocket practice. Thank you for following along today. Oh, I'm feeling so good right now. <laughs> that was so beautiful. So thinking back, or taking a look at any notes that you've taken, you might notice we've been through a lot so far together here today. We've looked at different learning styles. Lindsay shared the 100 wins exercise. We connected, we connected to passion and purpose a little more. We've spent some time being and feeling like a child. And you also looked at your routine, or at least jotted down a note to do so, so that you can start to look at your structure, what's working for you, what's not. Congratulations, your brains <laughs> have changed, my friends. So give yourself a big high five. Woohoo! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Feel free to take a second now and circle or highlight anything on your page that you want to come back to, the things that you're taking away from what we've done here so far, so that you can integrate them into your days, into your lives, and perhaps gain a little more insight into where you'd love to make changes. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Our final announcement is that this is just a little taste tester. Lindsay and I would love to introduce Elevate Brain Training 2.0. This is a virtual six-week course that's designed to 
help you to take your brain retraining practice to the next level. <laughs> I'm just so excited to share this with y'all because, oh my goodness, it's been a long time coming. This has been in the works and y'all are the first people to know about it. So Bianca and I have taken the practices that worked really well in our private sessions with people and apply them to a six week course designed to help you to personalize, prioritize and level up your practice. So this is for active brain retrainers only. And in this course, we will help you to define those limiting beliefs holding you back, help you to apply your core values to your everyday life, and we will be giving you state changers and additional protocols and even help you to come up with some sample routines to help reboot, sparkle up your practice, give it some life, and then take it to the next level. So for example, too, if you have struggled with visualization in the past and you don't quite know how to incrementally train or incrementally progress with specific things in mind, we are going to answer these questions for you and we're going to dive deeper into this process. So this is really taking our expertise, um, the training that Bianca and I have had working with clients for years and years and applying it to a program that works for you at your own pace on your own time. Yes, it's all you, baby. We are just so excited. Uh, Lindsay said this has been in the works for a while and it has been. We've been working on this for more than six months now and it'll be launched on June 12th at 12 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So not long to go now. As an incentive for being right here today and learning this wonderful information, playing with us, we are offering you and only you a 15% discount for this program. So the entire six week course with extended access beyond that six weeks is just 397 US, but you guys will save almost $60 off that straight off the bat. So to get first access to it with the discount, simply follow the link that's being posted in the chat now you'll enter your name and email address. And from there, you'll get an email asking you to confirm your email. Once you do, bing, you'll be set up with the code and we'll keep in touch with you to remind you when the course is launching so that you can get in first. The discount code is only available to webinar viewers. So it's for an additional 15% off the course. You can use it and also you can let your friends know about the replay of this webinar so that they can get in on it as well. Feel free to share the love there. This discount code will also only be open for one week when Elevate launches. So it definitely is for those early birds who are getting in first. Yes, so we love telling you about this information because you have some time to kind of decide, think about it. But if you want more information on it, Bianca, why don't you go ahead and post that link in the chat right now and sign up. You will receive that discount code. So you have about a week and a half to kind of mull it over, think about it, really learn about all that Elevate has going for it. I think you're really going to love it. We really took the best parts of what we do and put it together in this combined program. And we're so, so excited to help you elevate your brain retraining practice. So when you sign up, mark your calendar for June 12th at 12 p.m. Central Time. And you can do this by signing up with the link Bianca is going to be sending out. Mark your calendar, and then you'll be the first ones to receive access to the course. And then you can start your six week journey. So the program is only designed to take up a couple minutes of time a day. And our goal is to add so much personalization and so much value to your already super stellar practice. All right, y'all. So we'll be sending you more information about this. Snag that discount code if you're interested in it and you want some time to mull it over. 
we are just so happy that y'all are here today and that you learned some information about elevating your practice. So we'll be hanging out here for just a couple more minutes to answer any questions you have. So thank you so much for being here. Now is the time to post your question. And what Jacqueline has been doing too is any questions you've had along the way, she's been taking note of them and she's gonna kind of repurpose them at the end so that we don't have to go through it says 99 plus because I don't think it goes over that amount of chats that we have. So feel free, type your question in now and we're going to look at your questions in just a minute. Thank you all. Thanks so much for being here. Yes. Okay. So Jacqueline has posted some of the questions here. And um, good one. I'd like to hear your take on this, Lindsay. What if laughter is outside of your training zone? Yes, this is a really good question. So you can work up to it in the process of incremental training or incremental progress. So it's worth it to think about, okay, what is it about the laughter? Is it the vocal expulsion? Maybe that is with the physical exercise. Or is it maybe the uncomfortable feeling that comes from it, the shift? Maybe that's too much right now. So discern which one of the reasons why that could be. And then if it is the vocal expulsion, you can incrementally progress with that. Introducing <laughs> little bits of that physical exercise right before your practice. And you can work up to doing it for 30 seconds to more to a minute and so on and so forth. If it is connecting with warmth in your body and maybe what it feels like to access some of that happiness which could come up as a limbic response of oh this might be dangerous because this is new and different what i would encourage you to do is watch this replay and go back to the exercises we did about visualizing yourself as a kid and just thinking about what that looks like as a kid starting to connect with those emotions that you had I can guarantee that your body knows what joy and laughter feels like. Sometimes we can't emotionally connect with it yet. So first work on seeing yourself from a distance and getting familiar with that. And then that's the opportunity to slowly introduce things in your life that maybe bring you step into a little bit of feeling content or feeling what maybe a little tiny bit of joy feels like, but take the process slow. Beautiful. I hope that helps, Sam. We also have a question from Megan Williams, representing Australia. Will there be a different time option for Australian residents? And Patty Hayes has also asked, is Elevate live? So Elevate is designed to do over six weeks in your own time. So it's all there for you once you log in you can move through the content as quickly or as slowly as you like we've recommended six weeks to keep the momentum flowing and to keep you elevating in that short time frame so that you can really make the most of the tools that are there but as you've heard time and time again through the webinar it's all about you so you can do it whenever suits you uh so my current training zone allows for some engagement in some things that align with my purpose and passion, and I do, and yet I feel like I don't have a purpose. I know connecting with that would really help me. What do you think is going on here? So from my side of things, there could be a time perhaps in the past where you have followed your passion and purpose and perhaps in your mind you've gone that was dangerous that didn't work out that wasn't comfortable that wasn't okay so dig into the things that might bring that up for you and Feeling like you don't have a purpose sometimes purely can be that definition, as I mentioned earlier. 
it can be a matter of sometimes we think our purpose has to be this one thing and it's this big life purpose. So if you can look at purpose in the way that we did earlier and really just say, what would I be proud of? What would I love? What would inspire me and drive me and light me up? And when I get to the end of my life, I would be super satisfied with having been that, being caring, being loving, being present. So let us know if that helps. Yeah, I like that recommendation, Bianca, too, because it can start really small, like making breakfast for my family in the morning or making breakfast for myself in the morning. And that can be your current purpose. You start in the one to 5% region and then you can expand. And that's the time where when you start to connect with smaller purpose, it makes it a whole lot easier to connect with bigger purposes. Um, some questions here that I know this was a theme is resistance. So I know that we've all felt that resistance. So a lot of times resistance can be something that comes up as a result of, like Bianca mentioned, past experiences saying, oh, but last time I did something and it didn't work. So I'm going to procrastinate or I'm not going to do it or I'm going to meet resistance when it comes to a new state changer or uh, meet resistance when it comes to a new practice or figuring it out. If I should do another program, I'm going to come and meet that resistance. So a kind of fun and playful way to keep in theme with what we're talking about today to meet that resistance is every time that resistance presents itself. If you were to act that resistance out in a play, what would they sound like and look like and act like? Because I know my resistance when I feel that is like, hey, hey, Lindsay, hey, you shouldn't do that. You should really not do that. And I'm thinking, but why? Why shouldn't I do that? You know, I'm using my prefrontal cortex and I'm like, but there's gotta be a reason. And, and, and my resistance is like, no, you just shouldn't because I said so. Question your resistance, act it out and see if you can change it that way. This process of brain retraining means that we have more control than we ever knew of this, right? What's within, internal, not external, but in here. And so when we meet that resistance with questions and shifts, even little shifts, then we're starting to make these changes to our brains, create these new neural pathways in our brains. So if you can do it even a little bit throughout the day, that's gonna be key. And to go off of that, someone else was kind of talking about, well, state changers, how do I introduce them? Cause I just feel like I can't stick to them or um, you know, I meet that resistance. Simply act out this resistance when it happens and then if it can be helpful, even in that first week, set a sweet alarm, a, a light little ding or a little fun uh, ding on your phone. And every time that ding occurs, do a state changer. Or anytime you walk into a room, um, maybe have sticky notes that say one state changer on the bathroom mirror and one in your bedroom. And every time you see that pink sticky note, you do that state changer right then, right there. Mm -hmm. And making sure that you're getting state changes that feel good for you as well. Maybe even, again, shifting your perception on what a state changer has to be. If laughter is not for you, that's okay. If dance is not for you, if that's okay. If visualization is not for you, that's okay. Like, if you just think about what would help me to feel so alive and go back to that inner child or that child that you were and take cues from them take ideas from them take inspiration from them and just go yeah I'm going to fully get into that and take things from there um, we've got a question about the program during the six weeks how do you get your questions answered so at first you're going to be able to email through to us and get those personalized answers and as the group grows, we're going to be, open, Lindsay and I have talked about opening up a forum so that you can pop your questions in there so that we can all chat. Um, 
that at first you guys get sort of a lot of special treatment and love from Lindsay and I so that we can <laughs> be right there for you. Yes, yes, absolutely. And then to go off that, there was a question, how is this different from Vital Side's monthly group? So I think, um, Holly, you're referring to Vital Side Ed, so that's where we meet once a week. So what is happening here is there's active brain retraining programs like the Vital Side membership, which you're doing, um, and you know all of the other brain retraining programs. And that's a good first start to start to see dissipate some of those chronic conditions you're experiencing, start to gain some evidence for change. So you need that active brain retraining practice that to then do and partake in Elevate. So Vital Side Ed, we meet live once a week and that's what that looks like. Elevate is going to be filmed virtual programs with both Bianca and myself taking your practice to the next level. So maybe some of those state changers that's in vital side ed, you'll see kind of similarities in the ones that we have, but all this content is going to be new and fresh and different and meant to take your practice to a level where you can start to connect with that future self, who you see yourself getting that new job, how you see yourself being. So if you want more sparkly, energizing, um, kind of reinvigorating to your practice, because maybe you've been practicing for a long time and you just really need that, this is the program that is gonna be helpful for you in that way. Mm -hmm. So that might also answer Jennifer's question here. And hi, Jen. Um, so yeah, it's all pre-recorded. Um, you can do it in your own time. Uh, there's not any one-on-one -on -one included in the base level program. So it's just something that you can take and integrate as you like. And of course, yes, you can ask us questions. It's not completely there on your own with videos. Yes. All right. So a couple questions here. It seems like a couple people <clears throat> had questions about, well, what happens when I have a lot to do in my life? Stuff, things, 24-7, on demand. Hmm, this is an interesting question. And Bianca, I may turn this over to you because I'm interested to hear what you'll say. Um, so why don't you, why don't you start us out? Yeah, so when things are really busy, and I can totally relate, like even fitting a standard hour of brain retraining practice can be challenging. I've got a two and a half year old son, you know, he wants my attention all the time. <laughs> I've got my business, I've got this collaboration that I've been doing with Lindsay, especially intensely over the last few weeks, getting a few things ready. Uh, there's always stuff in life. And there's always things that we let get in the way if we let them but if we choose to prioritize what's important to us and what's most helpful for us which is a huge act of trust and connection and love with ourselves so that we can be our best version in all these different situations with all these people and events and things that are pulling at us uh, I think it's just about really fitting it into where it works for you. And the videos within Elevate are also short. It's not sitting for an hour or an hour and a half at a time. It's okay, cool. Here it is and here's your exercise. A lot of the things that we're doing in there are not, um, they're not uh, just us talking for the sake of talking. We'll either be taking you through a process or we'll be saying, this is what it's about. This is what you need to know. Here it is. Off you go and do it so that you're getting the most out of it. Because watching us as pretty as and entertaining as we might be is not what you're there for. <laughs> it's all about you. So we have consciously created it in a way that serves that and allows you to get out and get into the practice. Yeah, I love that response because we really did design it for people who are busy and are getting back into life and are a parent or an entrepreneur and are doing things with their life. That's what something I think that we can both attest to that we probably needed in the process. 
And so something that allows us those bite-sized chunks of time to then do the thing when we're busy, when we're working, when we've got lives, maybe even how to incorporate our kids into the process. Um, mm. So yeah, I think that's, that's a great one. And then um, another question about that perfectionistic tendency, that overused old pathway of perfectionism. Um, what can we really do about it? Maybe in your active brain retraining practice or um, in even this program, Elevate. So uh, Bianca, I'd be interested to hear what you say as well, but I think a, a major part of Elevate is helping us to connect with ourselves, how imperfect that may look. <laughs> And we can often, and I use I use that as imperfect looking as an example, as a symbol, because a lot of times we can look at ourselves in the mirror and say 25 things that are wrong with us. But it's often very hard to say one thing that is right with us. And this is that overused old pathway coming out of that perfectionistic tendency. And so it doesn't, it's not an overnight process of waking up in the morning and being like, I'm not perfect and that's okay. But it is this process of subconsciously programming that into your brain that nobody is perfect and that we can be gentle on ourselves. And that maybe there is one thing that when we look in the mirror, we can identify that is right with us, that is good with us. So it's a process and it takes time. Um, so, you know, I, I hope to, that Elevate will help you to kind of rekind rekindle that process of being gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. And something I did with my clients recently is, is make it like, kind of like Lindsay was doing before, like make a character and make, act it out. Like we were like being as imperfect and weird as we could because then also by comparison, your brain's like, well, actually I'm not that imperfect. I'm not that weird. I'm not that whatever. <laughs> and also just having, by having fun with it and externalizing it, you can create that shift and realize that it, it's okay. Like it's not actually you, it's just a thing mm -hmm. that you do, or it's just a hair out of place or whatever it is. Oh my gosh, there's so many different parts of us. We're complex beings, right? The most complex on this earth. And so let's shed some light on the different parts of us, not just the parts that procrastinate, not just the parts that have that resistance or connect with being a perfectionist. Let's connect with those other parts of us as well. I'm reading through the chat and I love hearing about y'all's just how the technique brought tears to your eyes and the things that y'all remembered. It's just a really, really cool, really cool to hear this. Cool. I'm just, I'm 30 messages back. <laughs> okay. Um, Cliffy, we answered a lot of them. Clarification that you would want on the PDFs, the audios, etc. Et if so, let us know. Uh, oh, Patty, yeah. we've got a question. If you haven't seen big shifts yet, but you've retraining for a while, would this be a good fit? So this would be a good fit because there could be little tiny things that you can do in your practice to tweak it and to make it more you. So if you kind of connected with this idea of I am a specific learning type, and maybe I'll take that into my practice, try that out in the next couple of weeks as you kind of continue your brain training practice. And then when Elevate gets released and launched, that's an opportunity to dive deeper into, well, how can I make visualizations work? How can I connect with feeling good and those feel good neurochemicals? How can I incrementally train? So this is what it's really designed for. I had a, you know, we both had a lot of people who were scheduling private consults with us and we realized and recognized this theme between a lot of people and the questions that they had. So that's why we're creating this to help you to get to the place where you're elevating your practice. And it means you will still be using your practice for the time being, but we wanna really make it work for you. Um, Bianca, do you wanna share? Oh, she shared the, uh, Jacqueline shared the link again, which is great. Mm -hmm. 
yeah apologies for the delay on the link there guys <laughs> um maybe share it do you want to share it? or Jacqueline why don't you share it once more because I think Jacqueline has copied and pasted it I haven't gotten to yeah, the end yet but yeah. no I know me neither okay so a self-trust has been a theme in groups recently is that a theme that's covered in this program yes it definitely is and I guess one of the beautiful things about Lindsay and I working together is that I've spent a lot of my time working in a coaching and personal development space, uh, personal development, spiritual growth, that kind of thing. So I feel that what we've brought together here is super unique in that it's not all just based on neuroscience or all just based on NLP or anything like that. And it is a very holistic view on brain retraining because brain retraining is not just for healing and it's not just for health related um, patterns that we want to change. It's about how we're showing up in our lives. So even before I did an official brain retraining program with Vital Side, I was already training my brain. I was already catching different thoughts about how I'm perceiving situations, how I'm feeling about myself. Like we spoke about, you know, even looking in the mirror, like how can we catch the thoughts and patterns that aren't serving us, that are making us feel deflated, defeated, not perfect, not good enough, whatever it is, and really shift those. So self-worth is something that's all throughout the practices and processes that we teach and the things that we talk about in Elevate it was a huge focus for us because again, Lindsay and I kind of saw it come up as something that's not necessarily addressed in a lot of the programs that are currently out there. It's this bridge that we're, we're kind of creating between, okay, I'm brain retraining. I'm trying my best. I'm doing the things, but I want, I want more. I, I want to figure out how I can visualize better. I want to figure out how to trust myself or like myself again. What is that like? I want to figure out how to train with certain things in mind. Um, this is the program for you. And there's no prerequisites. You don't have to work with either one of us privately first. The only prerequisite is to have an active brain retraining program, whether it's vital side or something else that you've been focusing on that you are applying daily, this is simply gonna build on that. Yeah, just getting through the comments here. Yes, Sarah's worked with me before. <laughs> um, it's completely different, but yes, it may be earth shattering and game changing for some people. Thanks for being here. Okay, how do you create balance between finding your joy and passion with the daily demands of life. Okay, I think we did answer that one. Yep. If you haven't had big shifts yet physically, but are retraining for a while, would this be a good fit? We did answer that one as well, yeah. but you can go okay, ahead and cool. answer if you have a- <laughs> No, it's okay. I think Jacqueline's like combining and resending to us. Got it, got it. I, if I haven't done a private or mastermind session, would you recommend the elevate programs or the other sessions you Maybe did that that's... as well okay cool i'm clearly behind maybe six messages behind one. now lindsay <laughs> Come on. got today. how about we use the next minute and answer thomas's question on the screen and then uh and then we'll be sending y'all some information um, more on this. So if you do have questions, if you're like, ah, I want my question answered and I didn't get a chance, um, sign up for Elevate and question, or maybe the answer to your question will be coming out. It's just an email. So you'll get that email discount code and then you'll get some more information on the program. Um, but why don't we finish uh, last question here with Thomas's question. Uh, Bianca, you want to go for it? <laughs> yeah, I just want to throw one in before that. So guys, when you register on this link, you will get the discount code, but the course is not available till June 12th. So once you're on that email list and you've got your code, we will keep you up to date and we'll remind you that the course is coming out so that you can, and we'll send you the link when it's ready so that you can be first through the door. So we've had a couple of people saying, I've got the link, but what do I do? 
Recording will also be sent when you sign up for the email, just so I know we've had a few questions there as well. Recording is going to be sent to you in the next couple of days. If you don't get it tomorrow, don't worry. It'll be coming in the next few days. We're going to make a couple edits to it. And then, um, yeah, so hang tight and, and sign up for that email uh, on that link that Bianca just posted. So Thomas's question, I would suggest movement. I'm very big on movement myself. Sitting and doing a breathing technique or a meditation doesn't always work for me. I need to get up and move. So whether it's walking or whether it's, um, you know, dancing, laughing, all that kind of thing. And I know that what I've come in with here is more addressing the stress that you might feel. So as an um, example of how to stop it is I would recommend a visualization process um, and really just programming in imagining yourself waking up in the morning and feeling alive and vibrant, calm and relaxed and really get into the details of that. So bring in all five senses, notice what you see, what you smell, what you hear, what you taste um, and even imagine what you're thinking of when you wake up. Really get yourself into that space and just rehearse that over and over and over again. You might even go and physically practice that in your bed, like lie in your bed, imagine it, and then open your eyes and experience it. Imagine that first thing you see when you wake up. The more you can get your brain and body into this practice, the more it will happen when those visual cues are there, when you do open your eyes or you feel your pillow in your face or whatever it is, then your brain can go, aha, okay, we've practiced this other pathway rather than waking up and feeling really stressed. Uh, and maybe some physical relaxation exercises could help you ahead of bed as well if you're feeling that your body is the thing that's stressed. So stretching or yoga nidra or something like that. I love, love, love all of this, y'all. Y'all have been amazing, amazing questions here. Please, please give yourselves a round of applause for being inquisitive, showing up for yourself, advocating for yourself. Um, it means the world to us. And it just means so much knowing that you are continuing to um, brain retrain and rewire for your well-being. So thank you all. I am going to be ending the meeting now. Please, please, please stay tuned. Sign up for that link. There's no payment necessary. All you need to do is just put your email in and you'll get that discount code and more information on Elevate. Thank you all for being here. Thank you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.